that I wanted to read to y'all and this is going to help you understand why it is important to have an idea about the Hebrew and the Greek. So bear with me when I read this because afterwards I'm going to give you some examples of where the Hebrew and Greek have confusing translations for the English and then um, I'm also going to give you just some bad translations. So, <clears throat> I, I wrote here, I put, Sometimes different English words are used in place of the same Greek or Hebrew word, and sometimes the same English word is used over different Greek or Hebrew words. So two distinct Greek or Hebrew words may have the same exact English word in place of it, or one distinct Greek or Hebrew word may have two distinct, two distinct English words over it. That is to say that the same Greek or Hebrew word has different English words in their place, and different Greek or Hebrew words have the same exact English words. So I know that's a mouthful that sounds like a riddle, right? But now let's get to the... Uh, let's get to a good example to illustrate this point. Agape, which is the Greek word that's been translated charity and sometimes love, has actually been translated love or charity. So agape has been translated into both of these words. So when you read that in the English, you'll have no idea that that's connected to this Greek word, agape. And then in here, if you look closely, maybe you can see some of the places where it says charity. Oh, I think I see one right there. Yep, there's a charity and there's a love. So this is showing you everywhere where agape is mentioned. This is the word study concordance. And here's the front right there. So... There's one example, but, and so to illustrate the, the point I'm making, that's been translated love. Okay, well, here's a completely different Greek word, phileo, that's been translated love. So you have agape that's been translated love, and agape is a Greek word, and you have phileo, which been, has been translated love, and phileo is a Greek word. So over here, we come to this word that's been translated love, and it's also been translated shell kiss. So it's been translated love and shell kiss. So when you see like shell kiss, you're not going to know that that's a form of phileo. And when you see love, you're not going to know that there's a, a difference there in the English between agape and phileo unless you know a little bit about Greek and where the translations even come from. So I wanted to use another one, which is a one of those famous verses um, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So right here, hypostasis has been, which is the word substance in Hebrews 11, 1, when it says faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's also mentioned in Hebrews 1, verse 3, and has been translated person. It's also mentioned in Hebrews 3, verse 14, translated confidence. And then when you get to Hebrews 11, 1, it's substance. So it's been translated person, confidence, substance. And then there's some other places it's mentioned it was translated um, confidence. So there's a, just a couple examples there of the Greek and how that's been used. So now... Let me go to Genesis chapter 1, um, and this, this would be the Hebrew now, so I'm actually showing you the Tanakh because they make some good notes down at the bottom. Um, subtle, if you're using the KJV, and shrewd are, are I'm sorry, subtle and naked are uh, from the same derivative of a particular Hebrew word. Um, yeah, so it's actually two different Hebrew words, but they're connected because they're from the same um, word. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. So, um, 
Shrewd, it says, it says Hebrew erumim, which is the word naked, play on erum, which is shrewd, which would be subtle in the KJV. So naked and subtle are connected there in the original language. And then right here, I'd like to use another example. Um, Jeremiah chapter 1. When, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse... 11, it says almond tree, and then in verse 12 in the KJV, it says, hastens over my word, but here it says, for I am watchful to bring my word to pass, and it explains to you how the, he, the word almond tree and the word watchful are related. Here at the bottom, it says Hebrew sh shaked, and then Hebrew sh sh Shoked, right there. So, almond tree and watchful over my word, or watchful to bring my word to pass, those are actually related in the original language. So now let me just give you a couple of, let me give you an example of a, just bad translations. In, he, in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 4, the word pulpit, it's actually McDowell, which means a tower, so you can look that up. Big, um, pulpit there is Migdal Tower in Nehemiah 8 4. And then in Acts ch chapter 12, verse 4, it says Easter. But if you look at the context, um, he was waiting till it, the Feast of Unleavened Bread was over, and then he's going to wait till um, Passover. So if you read Acts 12, verse 3 and 4, Easter is the word Pascha, and it means Passover, it doesn't mean Easter. And then the worst translation of all, and you can um, find all, you can look through the Bible and find these for yourself, is church. Church is not a building. Church is the, the body of believers, which is a gathering. So um, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I'm in the midst of them. And um, forsake not the gathering of yourselves together. It doesn't mean to go down to some building on a Sunday. <laughs> You'd have to read that into the scripture. So church and then connected to that word um, church in, the, in an evil way is the word bishop. Bishop just means an overseer. It doesn't mean a person who's down at some building who wears a, a robe or a tuxedo. That's, that's not even what a bishop is. A bishop means an overseer. So they, I, I believe they twisted the meaning of the, the... I believe they twisted that translation church and that translation of bishop to connect it because... Um, a body of believers has nothing to do with a building and a bishop has nothing to do with someone down at the building who calls himself like a, a pastor, a preacher, or a bishop. That's not even what pastor, preacher, or bishop is. So um, those are just bad translations. And then um, John chapter 1 verse 14 when it says, um, the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. Dwelt actually means pitched his tent. So our tabernacled. So that's, a, that's another example of something you just can't see in the English. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us means that Yahweh literally came down inside of a, um, the body of Jesus, right? And was in that body. So it's actually in that tent, meaning our bodies are the tent. What, know you not that your body is the temple? Um, the Bible explains that our bodies are the temple of God. So... Um, I hope that this helps. I know that's a lot to bite off if you're, um, or a lot to chew if you're not familiar with that. So I hope that that helps you understand a little bit more about the Hebrew, Greek, and English and how they're related and how they're not related and um, just some of the bad translations into the English. So thanks for watching. Bye.